We're standing outside St Cuthbert's Parish Church in Southport, Churchtown, Southport. Uh, it's a historic church this and it's historic for me because it's been my family church for five centuries. Um, the Rimmer, the original name for this area was Otter Grimmer Meals, the sand ground of the Sons of Rimmer, which is my name, you know my surname is Rimmer, I was named after this village and in the mid 16th century, 1540s, all the Rimmers in the world lived around this church, St Cuthbert's, and they had to attend daily mass in this church before the Reformation, they were buried in this church, they were baptised in this church, they were married in this church, so for me it's a historic place, you know, it's really the heart of my family tradition. Worldwide there's now I think something like 73,000 Rimmers, but 68,000 of them live in this part of the world, South West Lancashire, especially Southport, Formby and Liverpool. So um, we've come to this church today but it's November in Lancashire and it's a dreary day, it's very very wet. So we're standing in the lich gate of the church and we're just going to do a little video about what's happening in global politics, which is our favourite theme. Um, I want to talk about Donald Trump and what tradition he's part of because a lot of people now are saying why doesn't he behave like Ronald Reagan used to behave simply laugh at the opposition and you know play the nice guy all the time or why didn't he simply behave like Mrs Thatcher used to behave she was a sort of an establishment figure but radical at the same time but that was a different dialectic it was a different conflict of forces in those days the communist system was still up and running so the establishment was geared against communism the dialectic in the world was communism against capitalism or freedom free enterprise against the the tyranny the totalitarian system of russia so there was a, a little there was, there was a, a paradigm with, within which conservatives could, op could operate within the state within the establishment we're in a totally different paradigm now the dialectic today is between the globalists who want to demolish the nation state and want to create more and more power for these international institutions like the European Union, like the World Bank, like the United Nations and disempower the, 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 the democratic process in nation states. The globalists on one side against the national populists on the other. This is the only real dialectic in modern politics. Those who want to defend the nation state, maintain the identity of peoples, and protect and prosper national groups. They're the nationalists, the nationalists against the globalists. That's the struggle we're in at the moment. And it's not like the previous struggle between the, you know, within conservatives and the liberals within the capitalist system. It's totally different. It's a culture war. It's an undeclared war to the death. Who is gonna actually be victorious in this battle between the global institutions and the nation state? Because the globalists also have an ideology which is called cultural Marxism, which is about, they call it emancipatory politics, but it's about destroying traditions, national traditions, religious traditions, moral traditions, and replacing them with this notion of an absolutely free individual. You know, man in a Rousseau-like nature has thrown off his chains and can be whatever he wants. So he can have any sexuality he wants, he can belong to any nation he wants, he can have any gender he wants. It's a totally illusion, it's very anarchistic and it would destroy our nations. The whole globalist agenda is about the destruction of what we've received. But they're very uh, subtle about this. It's very understated. They don't want to make people feel um, insecure. So they, 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 they play this game in a very underhand way. But we're losing everything. And what is actually happening is new forces are coming into our society which are not part of this emancipatory pa paradigm this globalist agenda like islam like the africans <laughs> and from other parts of the world they're pouring into our society and then invading our welfare state <laughs> and they're stripping us bare. they're like a plague of locusts and we're not allowed to resist them because apparently now we're in one world it's <laughs> globalism is about a, a new world order a one world order but it's our loss we're beginning to realize what this all means for us, the indigenous people of the West, 
the national people, the national folk, if you like, is that we lose our welfare states, mm. we lose our national security, we lose our identity, we lose our future, and it doesn't feel like a gain. It feels like a loss because while, while these international institu institutions are being empowered and made stronger, we are made, being made weaker and weaker. And Donald Trump was about to fight back against that. No, we've had enough. We don't like the direction our countries are going in. And we want to put our borders back up. We want to secure our national economies. And we want to celebrate our national identities. Even something mundane is saying, Merry Christmas. You want to be able to say that without having a finger pointed at us. And someone calling us reactionary or something, you know, fascist or bigoted. No, we just want to be ourselves. So Donald Trump is in this cultural war which he's fighting and it's a war to the death but Donald Trump has proved himself to be a tenacious warrior he will not yield to these forces of globalism he will not yield to the globalist and they're getting angrier and angrier with him this is what this impeachment process is all about the Adam Schiff's of the world the Chuck Schumer's of the world the George Soros's of the world you know, the Michael Bloomberg's of the world, the, who's this latest guy, Leon Cooperman, you know, they're all rich New York bankers, they control the media, and they want to control America and the global order, and Donald Trump has become a bit of an irritant to them, and they want to get rid of Donald Trump, because they call him a nativist, he's standing up for the American people, they don't want the American people to rule in America, they want to rule in America, this global elite. But Donald Trump, has shown himself to have incredible stamina. It doesn't matter what these people throw at him. He doesn't seem to run out of energy or combative ideas. He comes at them, whatever they give him, he gives it back twofold, you know, threefold, fourfold. And it, this is what you see with nationalist movements now throughout the world. They will not buckle to the globalist anymore because they know what's at stake. If they buckle, we lose, we crumble and we're over. Donald Trump, He's more than a politician. He's a folk hero. He's a cultural icon. He's the rock of resistance that we're developing and building the nationalist coalitions around. Now, we've got an election in Spain on Sunday and the Vox party is shaking the whole system in Spain. They're shaking, they're rattling the political system over there. And uh, the, the media don't know how to cope with them, the leftist and the globalist. They're calling them the, the usual insults, fascist, Nazi, you know, blah, 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 blah. But the Vox Party have caught the imagination of the Spanish. And their rallies are getting bigger and bigger. They're now 15% in the opinion polls, soaring upwards. They're going to double their number of seats from the last election. This is an incredible growth surge, surge for the Vox Party. They have been faced the same intimidation and insults and hostility hostility that Trump has faced and they're overcoming as well they're showing themselves as unyielding just like Salvini in Italy who's come back he's won this Umbria regional election and he's rattling the ruling coalition there the globalist coalition again he's shown himself as having a sense a goal a sense of mission the nationalists will no longer be destroyed they're pushing and persevering until they triumph you know, it's it's remorseless. Their fight back, the fight back of the nationalist forces in the West is now, it will not be stopped. It will continue. It's full of energy, it's full of vigor, and these titanic figures are emerging in this historic battle. And uh, just as Trump will overcome this impeachment process and win in 2020, Vox are gonna establish themselves as the key player in the Spanish politics come Sunday when the elections uh, take place. And Salvini is going to return to government in Italy. And you can see with Marine Le Pen is now more popular than Macron. You see that the Brexit process will not go away in Britain. We have to win in these battles. The, the nationalists have to triumph. Because there's too, so much at stake here. In the past, they were crumble. In the Cold War era, when it was freedom against communism, nationalist forces would emerge. I remember the National Front in the 1970s, the BNP. They would crumble. They would not survive. Now, the nationalist forces are Adamite. They're rock solid. And they're going from victory to victory. We cannot afford to crumble. We have a developed ideology. 
we have strong parties and we have great leaders and we're going to triumph in this struggle i'm very very confident as we see these general elections we've seen one in poland this year we're going to see one in spain we've seen one in spain in april regional elections in italy the afd in germany they will not buckle they will not crumble they know what's at stake and the people have woke up to what the real the real division in society is between us who want to preserve our inheritance we want to give our children a future we want to maintain our culture and our way of life we want to secure our nations and we want to prosper our economy it's us the people under the nationalist leaders against the globalist who want to run things in their interest who don't care about us don't care about our traditions have their own agenda their own globalist agenda <coughs> George Soros the arch villain and all his uh, acolytes in America and across the world they must be faced down they must be defeated and they will be defeated that's why we've got to have optimism in this struggle and that's why we persevere and that's why we will overcome and win forward for nationalism <laughs>